Hey y'all, so this is going to be the first video and hopefully a longer series of Hoodoo book reviews. The intention behind this series is to highlight and uplift black authors in Hoodoo and share my uh, perspective on some books that I deem really valuable. I know Hoodoo is a mostly oral tradition and a lot of the magic of Hoodoo gets lost in translation, especially when it's written down. Uh, but there are some books that are highly worth reading and highly worth recommending. Um, and when I say some of the magic gets lost, um, it's, it's as simple, simple as uh, when an elder tells a story versus when the words are written down. There's a lot of meaning that is communicated non-verbally um, and in many other ways versus just text on paper. However, there are a lot of books that are very valuable and worth sharing and worth um, spreading the good word about. So um, the first book in the series I want to highlight is Mojo Workin by Katrina Hazard Donald. Now this book um, is on Audible and that's how I listen to most of it. I have a copy of it but I lent it to my sister because I was reading it and I was like, girl this book is amazing and you have to read it. So she still has the copy of the book and then I um, listened to the rest of it on Audible and finished it within uh, about a week or so. And I just wanna go over some of my favorite parts of the book, but before I do that, um, I my jaw dropped so many times reading this book and the reason why I'm selecting Mojo Working as the first to, to recommend and to review is because it really encompasses hoodoo from a historical context in a very scholarly way that I have not seen in many books before. A lot of books that are written on hoodoo maybe have like a chapter or a couple paragraphs on the history of hoodoo and the history of conjure uh, in relation to black people, black Americans. And that little snippet at the beginning of these books is a very throwaway. It's, it's, it's uh, kind of like a, we have to acknowledge this, but now let's get into the magic. Let's get into, you know, the formula and the this and the ritual and that. So much so that um, that little blurb of a chapter can be snatched out of those books. And a lot of people I know go straight to, you know, the money spells or the love spells and leave out the culture. When in, in reality and... Uh, the real of it is if you don't have the culture with the magic, you don't have the magic. If you don't understand the culture around a magic that you're practicing, then you don't understand the magic at all. It's like, uh, it's like if I snatch that, that branch off that pine tree, I don't have the source from which the pine grows. I just have pine needles. The pine needles can do something, but if I want to keep it prosperous and keep it growing, I need the whole tree. I need the culture. I need to understand it. Um, and this book, Mojo Working, provides context. It provides culture. It provides history. It provides so much that is necessary. And even in the structuring of this book is what really uh, blew me away. This book isn't structured in a way that's formulaic. You can't go through it and pick spells out and um, extract them in a way that you could with other books. You really have to read it. You have to read it in its entirety. And even if you read it, if you're not black, a lot of the messages and a lot of the underlying tones of this book go right over your head, which I think is very much on purpose by, uh, by Miss Hazard Donald. I think that she wrote it in a very specific way that black readers would understand some of the underlying things and there are workings in this book she does explain it in ways that you have to you have to know <laughs> you have to um, understand the culture to understand what she's saying because it's not written in a you know in a cookbook sort of way um, some of my favorite takeaways from this book are one, the chapter, I forget exactly where because I don't have the book in front of me, but the chapters where she goes into the professions that were associated with hoodoo. This book, is, or this, this part of the book is really important because 
in our generation, um, there's a lot of people who are waking up to hoodoo, who are you know kind of leaving the church or leaving organized religion and wanting to practice something more authentic, wanting to connect to their ancestors in some way. And then you run into marketeer hoodoo that that there's this narrative floating around that if you uh, if you didn't learn from your parents or an elder in your family or if you don't know somebody who practiced in your family then you probably didn't uh, then it's not in your family it's not you know you're an outsider or somehow um, and that's so far from the truth every black American has hoodoo in their bloodline um, and this the part of the book about professions is important because a lot of us want to do the investigative work of well, who was practicing and what did it look like? Um, and a lot of times you can't ask a grandparent straight up, hey, did we have hoodoo practitioners in our family? Because that stops the conversation. Those are buzzwords that really scare um, a lot of our grandparents and aunts and uncles because, you know, uh, dogma. Um, you can't really say conjure, you can't really say uh, root work, uh, you can barely say uh, medicine man or medicine woman, you know, you're, so you're trying to find these back channels and by asking about these professions, especially because she notes them in the time era where these people would be connected to hoodoo, such as midwives, such as morticians, such as people who worked in apothecaries, you know, medical practitioners. If they, if you have people in your family who practiced or worked in these professions from reconstruction era to about World War II, like the heyday of hoodoo, um, more likely than not, they were practitioners themselves or they knew a lot about hoodoo. And um, I just think that's so fascinating that, uh, if, if you're not aware when you're reading that, that could go right over your head. But for black people, it's like, here, like ask your elders about these professions um, to see who in your family was a practitioner. And um, that I just really love that part of the book. Another part that I loved was when she went into the history of John the Conqueror and the people um, that are associated with that spirit throughout history. Uh, because I think there's about two or three possibly people that are associated with that spirit uh, and that story. And one thing that struck me is the reverence that black people had for John the Conqueror back in the day, especially in slavery, um, is, the, is, is almost like the same heart space or reverence that black people today have for Jesus. Um, the way in which Jesus represents this uh, conquering everything, like there's eternal hope, like no matter what, it's not a question of if freedom is coming, it's not a question of if we will get over this hurdle, it's a question of when and how will it, you know, shape up in the physical realm. But there is already a, a conquering, there's already a, you know, a victory on this situation and for black people in slavery john the conqueror was the spirit that held that place of john's conquered this 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 john's conquered the devil you know um so surely our freedom is coming surely our victory is coming it's just a matter of when and it did um and it will continue to happen for us also um when i was reading this i was thinking about trickster spirits in ATRs, trickster spirits. And a lot of trickster spirits um, are misunderstood in their context. Um, it's not a lot of like, a lot of trickster spirits aren't trickster spirits just for the sake of like fucking up people's lives. Some of them do it in jest uh, to thumb their nose at oppression especially John the Conqueror in these stories, um, he wasn't just like, oh, look at me, I, I you know, I'm uh, better than, or I just want to be looked at as cool. It was really, like, a lot of these stories are John the Conqueror thumbing his nose at oppression. Like, oh, you're going to tell me that I can't do this because I'm black? Or you're going to tell me I have to call you boss man? Or you're going to tell me that I have to play dumb? Bet. 
got you. And then he would do something that would circumvent them, that would outsmart them, that would outwit them, that would overpower them. And he wins and he gets to thumb his nose at them and he gets to, you know, uh, look down at them in a way in spite of the system of oppression that was created to keep him down. And a, a, a third thing about John the Conqueror is as I was reading this, I remembered the way in which my grandma would tell me and my sister's stories about Br'er Rabbit when we were little. And there was always a sense of pride about these stories. And it, it clicked when I was reading this book um, that that pride that a lot of black grandmas and even black grandpas, when they tell trickster stories like, oh, how we got over, they're continuing a, a archetype that is very essential for black people to understand in John the Conqueror. And that archetype has to continue for black people to know that we have overcome, we are going to overcome. Um, any obstacles that stand in our way, any systems that are created to put us down, any caste systems that put us at the bottom, we are always going to survive. We are always going to overcome because we've overcome so much. So that's what's embedded in those trickster stories. And a lot of outsiders and a lot of marketeer hoodoo doesn't understand that, doesn't, um, grasp or understand the power and the meaning behind some of these trickster spirits and why they are important for black people. And speaking on marketeer hoodoo, I also love that in Mojo Working, Katrina Hazard Donald goes into the history of when marketeer hoodoo started. How did that infiltrate hoodoo? And, um, and the decline of hoodoo and when more black people lost interest and moved towards the church and why that shift happened. Um, it's, it's very important and I feel like if you're just getting into hoodoo and just trying to understand it, this is a very, like this book should be in your top five of um, things to dive into because there's such a wealth of knowledge and it's, it's so well written that I'm probably gonna read it again and get even more nuggets of information out of it. Um, so if you've read Mojo Working and you loved it, please comment below, share like your thoughts and opinions. If you have questions about it and you're like, I maybe, you know, this part I didn't fully understand. Like, let's have a discussion. Um, and if you haven't read it, go read it, go listen to it, and then come back to this video and let's, you know, chop it up again. Um, but that's my quick review of quick. I'm at 12 minutes. <laughs> that's my review of Mojo Working and I will continue this series of book reviews. Thanks.